This right here is a 2012 Evinrude E-Tech. So it's a, a 60 horsepower powerhead, 40 at the jet. They call it a 60-40 jet outboard. And this is what the jet unit looks like down at the bottom. You've got a intake grill here that sucks water through some grating and then it spins it around here um, and squirts it out the back. This is the exhaust tube. That's where the actual exhaust comes out inside this. And then the water comes through the annulus around the outside here. And you basically get this ring of water shooting out the back, which creates forwards thrust. Interesting little detail. This is a trim fin, I believe, is what you call it. And because the water comes up and then gets spun before it gets shot out, this thing tends to want to turn while you're driving. And I did have one where this trim fin was straight and I'm holding onto the tiller and it's always pulling in one direction. So this is actually set to make sure that it pushes itself in a nice straight line. It isn't always trying to twist on you. Now this jet foot, this is the stock aluminum one. And you'll notice there's a little, very tiny bit of a dent here. <laughs> That's uh, That was a really solid hit. <laughs> so there was enough of a shock when I hit this, normally the outboard just sort of bounces back and comes back and you keep going and it, it, it's normally okay, but that was enough of a hit that it actually knocked something loose up here, which made me have to float back down. This is the piece that got knocked loose and I'll just show you quickly what that is. I believe this is called the fuel vapor separator, VST tank, or is the fuel condenser tank? I think it's the fuel vapor separator tank, or the vapor separator tank, VST tank. If I get that wrong, sorry. Uh, this was the one that broke, and I'll just sort of show you how this all fits together here. Um, this piece here goes on the bottom like that, and at the top there's a float right here, so this basically plugs the top. The way a float works, if you're not used to what a carburetor does, is there's that little cylinder in the middle that goes up and down. Let's see if I can get this to focus. But basically, the, the piece I'm moving with my finger actually floats in the gasoline. So when it's up like this, it closes the little valve and water can't get in. And when it's down, then it lets the fuel in. So this just regulates the fuel level inside of this tank. And then inside of this tank, so this would be full of gasoline, there's this little hose or a metal tube. Water comes in here and goes out there. And that is actually just water-cooled gasoline. So why do you need to water-cool your gasoline? And this is the high-pressure fuel pump. So basically everything that's in here is now in that other thing. Uh, it's They're both original OEM Evinrude parts. I think they just remanufactured it either to make this a little bit stronger by having it all in one thing, or that's just a, a slightly cheaper way to manufacture it with less parts. But the, the new piece, I bought it in Canada. It was $736 shipped to my house. Not a cheap part and very necessary. So what does it do? This fascinates me. So we're going to start here. There's your gas tank and gas comes out that gas tank and columns along this little hose. That's the uh, primer bulb. So you squeeze that and that kind of gets you started. And then it comes into the outboard via this hose right here. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna zoom out here just so you get the whole picture. This comes into this. I believe this is a diaphragm fuel pump. So it uses little pulses from the crankcase is how I think it works. And it basically just moves a little diaphragm and pumps fuel out this tube. That tube then comes all the way around the outside up and into this fuel filter. So this is the low pressure fuel from the low pressure fuel pump it goes through this. And then that actually comes into the engine via this hole here or into the vapor separator tank. So that basically fills this tank up until the float closes it off and there you go, this is full of gas. Then inside here, there's that high pressure fuel pump and the high pressure fuel comes out uh, at the top right here. So it's, it's basically inside this and squirts out the top here. That comes down and around and over to the injectors. So right here, 
that piece at the back is where the high pressure fuel comes to the injector and then goes past the injector and back to the vapor separator tank. So the way the reason it needs to do that is is this is a high pressure fuel pump. It's basically one speed. It just turns on at max speed and it's constantly making high pressure fuel. At idle, this just needs a tiny little bit. Because it's direct injected, what that means is it, it actually goes inside the piston. So when the piston comes up for a compression stroke and it's squeezing together be, just before it bangs and explodes, it's under a lot of pressure. And this needs to have enough fuel pressure to overcome that. Because norm normally as it's coming down an intake stroke, the valve would let it in. This is a, a two stroke, so it works differently. But the it's actually inside the piston next to the spark plug is the injector. So you need a really high pressure uh, fuel pump for this and at idle it would just be using a little teeny bit of fuel just a little drop and so this fuel pump would just be spinning and you can actually boil your gasoline it can get hot the same way a blend tech blender your vitamix you can boil your soup just by letting it spin for a long enough time this would end up boiling your gas so this is a circuit that just puts high pressure fuel into the injectors and then it, it keeps circling around like that and you've got the water inlet uh, which comes out here and in here. Or actually, when you're running the engine, it's the other way around. I'll explain that in a second. But you, you've got cooling water in here that basically water cools your gasoline. And what an interesting thing. You need that in order to run this kind of a, a setup. So this piece right here, this is sort of the little P-tube. So normally water gets sucked up from the jet, goes through to cool everything up here in the top, down this little spiral and then out the bottom and out your p-tube when you're in the backyard you put your hose on this and it basically that's what cools the whole engine it sort of goes backwards something that's kind of interesting i bought this engine second hand and this is what it looked like there's uh some threads on here where you can screw your garden hose fitting interestingly enough when i bought this kit it, it was really good it came with this, it came with a couple of hoses, all the clamps you need and everything. But it came with this and it said, very important, make sure you screw this restrictor into your little P-tube. So I assume that that came stock with one of these things. It said, use the restrictor and use the little blue O-ring or your engine might overheat. So I never had that before and I don't think I had any issues with the engine overheating, but it would make sense that you need a little bit of back pressure just so that the, the water that's getting pumped up through the engine is sort of pressing against something and just squirting out there a little bit. So that's kind of an interesting thing if your engine is missing that may be worth looking into. The only specialized tool that I needed was a, a clamp for these high pressure, um, I don't know what you actually call these clamps anyways. Um, it's the same thing you use for doing PEX plumbing in your house. You can get them at any hardware store. Yeah, they're just these little PEX clamps. So it came with some of those for the high pressure stuff. And then you're actually just using zip ties for all the low pressure water stuff. But that is your vapor separator tank and kind of what it does. And again, what broke on the old one, if we come to the back here, this plastic right here, it's getting a little dark, so it's not focusing very well, but that plastic cracked off right there and there. And normally, there's a little rubber grommet that kind of slides on here and slides on there. There's enough shock to crack those. And then you come over here, there, little bolt head sticking right by my finger there and there. So this piece basically just slides forwards and then presses on to that piece there, which is again held in rubber and there's just a little uh, snap ring clamp thing. Words are hard. There's a, it basically just clips in and snaps there. So when the plastic part here broke, when this part here snapped, there was also enough that this bottom O-ring and that, basically this piece, which would stick on like so, it jarred it into something enough that right there, right where my finger is, you can see that little line. That is a hairline crack. And that crack was enough that the contents of this, I believe it's at around 30 to 50 PSI is sort of the return line 
uh, I think there's higher pressure coming out of the pump, but it was enough pressure that it was just leaking gas everywhere. And also, strangely enough, my outboard didn't run. So I had to float that one home. So I'm hoping that the amount of impact that happened when I hit and knocked this loose uh, doesn't wreck this one. And also, this is getting kind of beat up. It's the stock aluminum one. You can buy these plastic ones. I think they're made out of polyurethane. They're not super expensive, but you can bolt those onto the bottom and it's a whole new grate and everything. And I think they provide a bit of a shock absorber. So when you smash a rock, there's a bit of flex in this piece. And that flex means that that real hammer impact that might knock something else loose up here isn't going to be quite as severe. So that'll definitely, that's in the plans for, for later to order one of those up. I think you get them out of Russia. <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to have a look for those plastic foots, which might make this a little bit more durable if I do keep smashing stuff. The rock that hit this right here, it actually came up the tunnel. So the, the tunnel basically bottom, like if this was sitting on the grass, this would be sitting on the grass and that's level with about the back of this. And that comes at a bit of an angle, but the rock, was right in the middle of the boat, came up the tunnel a little bit and still managed to smash this thing pretty good. So there's only so much you can do. I'm hoping that won't happen again. That's all for now. If, if you're here looking at this vapor separator tank, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in like gold mining videos and boating in the outdoors. I'm gonna be heading out to a lake next to prospect a bunch of little streams that come in along the side of the lake. Hopefully I find some gold and I don't hit any rocks out in the lake. Uh, <laughs> but I will be back to the Alberta rivers to do some, some gold mining in this little jet sled shortly. So until then, thank you for watching and uh, have a great day, everyone.